Hey everybody, Dom here, and you should all sub. <laughs> that was the most subtle and lewd joke I ever made. So subtle that you have to re-listen to the first sentence to even notice it. If you don't understand the joke, ask your dads. Anyways, today we're going to review all the mutations found in Left 4 Dead 2. Mutations are miniature game modes. They modify the game in interesting ways by introducing wildly differing rule sets. They change the gameplay formula by modifying anything from small slight details to core gameplay concepts. In essence, they mutate the game, hence the name. Alone, none can really replace the amazing gameplay loop Left 4 Dead 2 has. They're fun distractions, but you wouldn't base an entire game on one. I say that, but Realism vs. and vs. Survival actually started off as mutations and were rolled into their own game modes in the main menu. Originally, mutations rotated weekly, making it a big exciting event when a new one went into circulation, which led to a lot of people playing them. As of July 2012, all of them are available to play at all times. This unfortunately had the negative side effect of making it very difficult to fill up a lobby, or find a game in progress for the specific mutation you want to play. Having a lot of choices spread the player base thin. All the multiplayer mutations have their own lobby areas, and it's not possible to browse all of them at once. Because of this, a lot of mutations can only reasonably be played alone or with a dedicated group of friends. Something that I don't have. I don't mention this to be personal, I mention it because a few mutations become impossible to play, and therefore impossible to give an accurate explanation on the gameplay that takes place within them without a dedicated group of friends. Let's start the reviews and deal with the friends problem when it shows up. Let's begin. Last Man on Earth is a one player mutation made by Valve. This mutation can only be played single player and disables survivor bots. All common infected are disabled along with the boomer special infected. Defibrillators are disabled and health packs spawn more frequently. The goal of this mutation is to make it to the end of maps like regular campaign play. The twist is, you are alone with the special infected and they really want to grab you. If one succeeds in grabbing the survivor, they will deal damage until the point where they would normally incapacitate the survivor. Instead, the survivor gets automatically freed and set to critical health with the black and white screen effect. At this point, it's important to clear the special infected and quickly heal as some damage or being grabbed again will result in death. The structure of this mutation incentivizes going through maps as fast as possible. No common infected means there's nothing to swarm the player if they rush through a map. The only thing to worry about is the special infected. When they're killed, a new one can't spawn until a hidden timer counts down. This means by going fast through a map, less special infected are encountered, which improves the likelihood of success. This mutation is popular among speedrunners. This mutation is really tense and fun. At all times, it's necessary to use sound to figure out where the special infected are going to attack from. When they attack, it's all down to split-second decisions whether one manages to pin the player. When a tank spawns and starts to attack, the frantic exhilaration such an event creates is unbelievably extreme. This mutation can be one of the most fun things to experience in all of Left 4 Dead 2. Lone Gunman is another one-player mutation made by Valve. This mutation can only be played single player and disables the survivor bots. All special infected, excluding boomers, tanks, and witches, are disabled. Special infected spawn less frequently. Defibrillators are disabled. Common infected do bonus damage. All weapon spawns are disabled, and the player starts with the magnum. The goal of this mutation is to make it to the end of maps like regular campaign play. There are no teammates, only the magnum is usable, common infected are more dangerous, and for the most part, the only special infected is the boomer. These few small changes add up to the gameplay being very different versus standard Left 4 Dead 2. Like the Last Man on Earth mutation, this one is very tense. Another similarity is the structure incentivizes rushing through maps as fast as possible for a higher chance of success. Comparing the two, this mutation is way less fun. It feels like this mutation was made to simulate the playstyle of other zombie survival games. A lot of the strengths of Left 4 Dead 2 gameplay are disregarded in favor of something more bland and simpler. There's fun to be had in running by common infected and meticulously gunning them down, while making sure none close the distance and chip off some of your health. The gameplay just isn't very appealing when stretched out to be the only thing you're doing for the entire campaign. Other things to note, it feels like overkill that every map starts off with 4 health kits when there is only one survivor. It's probably an oversight. In certain situations, this mutation is brutally difficult. The tank crescendo event on the first map of the sacrifice is probably impossible without a Molotov or a gas can. Left 4 Dead 1 Co-op, Left 4 Dead 1 Versus, and Left 4 Dead 1 Survival are three mutations made by Valve. They are being reviewed together because of their similarities. Each one aims to modify the gameplay of Left 4 Dead 2 to make it more like the original Left 4 Dead. This is done by disabling the Jockey, Spitter, and Charger Special Infected. Removing all the weapons added, including the melee weapons. Removing Defibrillators, Adrenaline Shots, Boomer Bile, Deployable Ammo, etc. Despite the extensive changes, the experience isn't 100% authentic. Things such as not being able to see the survivor's legs and the user interface being different ruin the illusion. 
Additionally, tank spawning rules aren't changed, so multiple tanks aren't possible like they were in Left 4 Dead 1. In general, the game is a bit easier with the newer Special Infected removed. The Spitter and Charger were created to counter the powerful strategy of survivors camping in defendable corners. The Left 4 Dead 1 survival mutation plays very differently without these infected. It becomes easy to camp in corners, as suspected. It's very thematically fitting to play the original campaigns with the Left 4 Dead 1 style mutations. It's interesting to simulate the gameplay that occurred on these campaigns. By contrast, it feels very wrong to play the Left 4 Dead 2 campaigns with these mutations. There's something odd, it's like playing in an alternative universe where the new campaigns were only a map pack for Left 4 Dead 1. The limited special infected variety and weapon variety makes the game feel more repetitive. I couldn't test out the Left 4 Dead 1 vs mutation because no one plays it. I suspect it's similar to regular vs mode, but the infected the players become is more consistent. Gunbrain is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Valve. It's a training practice mutation for the analytical players. It enables the use of chat commands to view statistics on weapons, players, accuracy, damage sources, etc. as the game is being played. It's supposed to create interesting graphs in the message of the day screen, but doesn't seem to work for me. I can't help but think, why is stat tracking not part of the base game? Maybe it could be exploited if you could see the damage sources and accuracy of yourself and teammates in real time in versus mode. I guess the stats at the end of the campaigns and on Steam profiles is good enough for now. Confoggle is an 8 player versus mode mutation made by Progedy Sim. Confoggle is the mutation version of a server mod with the same name, made to standardize and rebalance versus mode for competitive play. In general, the game is rebalanced in favor of the infected team. Health packs are disabled and replaced with pain pills. Laser sights, defibrillators, and tier 2 weapons including the hunting rifle are disabled. Random game elements are minimized such as tank spawns. Tanks spawn on every map. The respawn time for special infected is reduced. There are a lot of smaller changes as well. Unfortunately, it's impossible to test this mutation firsthand because nobody plays it. It's understandable. Competitive versus mode players who would use the mutation version over the mod version is a very niche category of players. Holdout Dash and Shoot Zones are 4 player mutations made by Valve to demonstrate the advanced mutation scripting tools they released in February 2013. All of them feature the Left 4 Dead 1 cast of survivors, even if they take place on Left 4 Dead 2 maps. Holdout has 4 scenarios, 2 training and 2 challenge. In the training scenarios, survivors are tasked with surviving through waves of infected until rescue arrives. In the challenge scenarios, survivors are tasked with depositing gas into generators to keep spotlights lit to signal for rescue. A countdown timer on screen only ticks down to rescue arriving while the generators have fuel. A batch of gas cans spawn in randomly at set locations after a previous batch is deposited. The infected attack the survivors in waves. An on-screen timer counts down to when waves begin. Between waves, the survivors are safe, excluding a few common infected left over. The special infected drop backpacks on death. When walked over, currency is collected. This money is used to do various things including buying supplies, opening tier 2 weapon racks, opening ammo crates, and fabricating mines. Speaking of, mines are explosives that automatically detonate when infected are nearby. When held, they float in front of survivors in a clumsy and laggy manner. This mutation is comparable to Call of Duty Zombies. There are a lot of mechanical similarities, especially with the concept of boarding up windows and setting off traps. This is probably the most ambitious official mutation. This mutation is complex. There's a lot of things to process and think about. My advice is to play the first run with the expectation of failure. Just walk around and familiarize yourself with the tools available. Then, try to do well on the second run. I highly suggest playing this with other people. The bots don't understand the mechanics. Other players can split up and make better use of the downtime between waves. Another tip, find and open the free tier 1 weapon rack first as the survivors only have pistols to start off with and they're underpowered for the large waves that infected that attack. The training scenario on Death Toll's final map has a weird crafting mechanic where mushrooms and flowers can be combined to make items. I have to make note of this because it's just so strange. Overall, this mutation can be a blast. I highly recommend it if you have a group of friends to play it with. Dash has two scenarios. One takes place on the second map of the parish and the other takes place on the fourth. This mutation tasks survivors with racing through checkpoints as fast as possible. They start off with M60s, Magnums, pipe bombs, and adrenaline shots. After a survivor leaves the starting area, a timer begins. The goal is to touch all checkpoints quickly to get the lowest time possible. Touching a checkpoint summons a large horde and a few special infected. The intensity of the horde is extreme, but the survivors are overpowered so it balances out. There are two types of checkpoint. Small ones that require a single survivor and large ones that require all four. The large checkpoints have four cylinders near their base. They turn green to indicate that the survivor has touched a checkpoint. Each cylinder corresponds to one of the survivors. Once a checkpoint is captured, the next one becomes unlocked. This mutation is pretty fun. I recommend it with friends as the bots don't understand the premise. If you don't have friends, see if you can beat my time of 2 minutes and 1 second with bot survivors in the park scenario. Shoot Zones takes place on the second map of Dark Carnival. 
Survivors are tasked to complete the map while only being able to deal damage under the effects of a temporary buff from checkpoints. The checkpoints appear as floating tombstones with an outline. When stood near, they play a short song and allow survivors to deal damage for about 3 seconds. On screen there's text to indicate if a survivor is able to deal damage. Special infected are disabled in this mutation. New checkpoints only become available after old ones are used, so touching almost every checkpoint is necessary. This mutation is not very fun. It's frustrating and probably the worst mutation out of all of them. There's nothing worse than being surrounded and having no way to deal damage to the infected. Bots really don't understand how to play this mutation. They'll hopelessly try to kill the invulnerable infected all day. One side effect of the common infected being invulnerable is that they still walk around while super deformed from damage. They can be headless and still charge towards survivors. This is amusing to watch. Gibfest, or Jibfest, however you like to pronounce it, is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Valve. The survivors start off with M60s and Magnums, with unlimited ammo and no reloading. Ammo piles and weapon spawns are disabled. And that's it. It's a very simple set of changes. This mutation is entertaining. It's fun to play a power fantasy once in a while. Everything is easier, but it's still possible to take damage, die, and lose. It's just very unlikely. The M60s kill infected a bit quicker, but where they really shine is versus tanks. Tanks get absolutely decimated in seconds. Interestingly, it feels bad to not have the gameplay loop of reloading. The fun of strategically playing when to reload between waves of infected is missing when reloading is removed. My muscle memory fights me to try to reload, despite it being pointless in this mutation. The fun of scavenging around for guns and ammo is also missing. Unlike most mutations, this one actually sees play. It's not ultra rare to find a lobby or a game in progress. Headshot is a 4 player mutation made by Valve. This mutation has an exclamation point in its name, so it has to be said like that. In this mutation, common infected can only be killed by most weapons by taking damage to the head. Taking damage with their bodies only causes them to stumble back. Special infected are unchanged. The ride police on common infected work as normal and can only be damaged on their back. The idea of this mutation is to simulate the concept found in zombie media that zombies can only truly be killed by destroying their brains. Despite the concept, there are a lot of mechanical exceptions and small nuances. Explosive and fire ammo works as normal and doesn't have to hit the head. Propane tanks, oxygen tanks, gas cans, pipe bombs, and molotovs work as normal. The chainsaw, M60, and grenade launcher work as normal. Lastly, mounted guns work as normal and don't have to aim for headshots. Most melee weapons don't kill common infected. Only the ones that slice, and only if the user hits the head area of the infected. It's unclear if survivor bots understand the concept of this mutation. They don't have trouble killing common infected, so they must naturally have a tendency to aim for headshots. This mutation isn't very fun. It feels like the weapons weren't designed for this. With the common infected being a lot tankier, it's easier to run out of ammo. Going out of your way to aim for a much smaller area on the infected messes with muscle memory and feels strange. Problems with the infected's hitbox combined with lag brings to light issues that would otherwise remain unnoticed. In other words, you don't realize how bad the hitboxes are for headshots until you're forced to get headshots. I would not recommend using melee weapons because even a swing aimed perfectly for the head will sometimes not count. Missing based on random chance is a horrible feeling. Iron Man is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Valve. In this mutation, ammo piles are disabled. If all survivors die, the game kicks everyone back to the lobby to retry from the start of the campaign, rather than reloading from the start of the map. Realism rules are in effect, so there are no glowing outlines. Witches are stronger, respawn rooms are disabled, body shot damage is decreased versus common infected, etc. The description of this mutation is a bit misleading. The survivors that die will respawn after map transitions. In addition, they can still be resurrected with defibrillators as normal. This mutation is good. Ideally, it's played on Expert, with a dedicated group of Expert players looking for a challenge. For the most part, it's just realism mode without ammo piles, and a harsher penalty for everyone dying. The removal of ammo piles actually does a lot to change the gameplay. Ammunition runs out so fast. Since it's the only way to get more ammo, survivors will probably pick up new weapons every time they're available. Forcing players to switch their weapon often rather than stick to their preference is interesting. In some situations, a player will have to downgrade their tier 2 weapon to a tier 1 weapon if they're desperate. Thinking twice about using a secondary weapon over a primary weapon to save ammunition is fun. Four Swordsmen is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Valve. This mutation disables weapon spawns and makes the survivor start off with the katana melee weapon. Common infected are disabled, but special infected spawn at an increased rate. Deployable ammo pickups are disabled. Dealing with the special infected is easy despite the survivors only having a short range weapon. Getting covered in boomer bile doesn't summon a horde, so killing boomers isn't a big deal. Shockingly, tanks die very quickly to multiple survivors slicing away at them. Since there are no common infected, 
Alarmed cars can be ignored completely, and a lot of crescendo events are easier. It's probably a good idea to avoid every witch. This mutation isn't my favorite, but it's entertaining and I'd recommend. The only part that's bad is survivor bots take an absurdly long time to rescue others. They'll often be able to shove someone to rescue them from being grabbed, but will instead waste time trying to position themselves better. Chainsaw Massacre is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Valve. This mutation disables weapon spawns. It starts by giving the survivors chainsaws. Every chainsaw has unlimited fuel. Deployable ammo pickups are disabled. It seems like this mutation wasn't well programmed. Every map starts with chainsaws on the ground where the survivors spawn, even if they already have one. Because of this, every map starts with the survivors simultaneously playing their voice lines for finding a chainsaw. Despite the whole purpose of this mutation being to use the chainsaw, survivors start with pistols and can pick up pistols dropped by survivors who pick up chainsaws. This is another reason why I think this mutation is poorly programmed. It's possible to ignore the premise and use pistols. Actually, it's probably a strategically good idea to have one of the survivors use dual pistols as they can deal with the boomers from a distance. Left 4 Dead 2 has a hidden game mechanic where survivors can cut the smoker's tongue while the smoker's trying to grab them. With chainsaws and unlimited fuel, it's easy to avoid getting caught by a smoker. Players could just hold down the primary fire button forever. Survivor bots don't really use chainsaws under normal circumstances. This mutation forces them to pick up and use them. They seem to perform reasonably well with the weapon. Perhaps normally they're programmed not to pick up chainsaws so that human players can have all the fun. This mutation is okay. There's fun to be had, but it isn't the best. It's very comparable to the Four Horsemen mutation, right down to tanks dying super quickly. I just like how easy it is to friendly fire when everyone is running around with chainsaws. The last thing to note, this mutation is a really obvious movie reference. So obvious that I'm not going to tell you what it's a reference to. Hard 8 is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Valve. This mutation increases the amount of non-boss special infected to 8 and increases their spawn frequency. In general, this mutation makes the gameplay harder and more frantic. It's very possible that the survivors all get grabbed at once. If this occurs, it's game over and the only recourse is randomly getting lucky that one of the special infected dies due to fire damage or something like that. It's really easy to fall into compounding disastrous situations. Maybe a few infected grab survivors. The ones rescuing take damage in the process and seconds later everyone's low on health. My advice is to retain a leveled head when things get hectic. Prioritizing which infected to deal with first is important. One unexpected thing about this mutation is it's very easy to run out of ammo. A lot more ammunition is consumed dealing with the extra special infected. Often the special infected will all spawn in all at once and create a giant mass of danger heading towards the survivors. The challenge rarely comes from the infected surprising the survivors. They almost always appear as one big noisy group. Special Delivery is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Rayman1103. This mutation is a variation on the mutation Hard 8. Common infected are disabled. The amount of special infected is increased and their spawn times are greatly reduced. Survivors start with the Magnum. The main difference between this mutation and Hard 8 is this one doesn't have common infected. To compensate for this, the special infected spawn in almost constantly. The game pacing is not very good. Every few seconds a survivor will get grabbed by a special infected. It's a really difficult and long slog. It's frustrating to be constantly killing the special infected over and over. It gets to the point where you keep the boomers and spitters alive and try to run forward past the infected. Without common infected, boomers are reasonably safe to ignore. One attribute of this mutation is that it allows multiple tanks to spawn in on the same map. This would be fun and interesting if it wasn't for the relentless onslaught of special infected numbing down all excitement. Overall, this mutation is pretty bad. Hunting Party is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Valve. This mutation disables all special infected excluding the hunter and the boss special infected, so the witch in the tank. In addition, the maximum number of special infected is increased so there can be up to 6 hunters alive at once. This mutation is very easy as long as the survivors stay close to each other. When a hunter attacks and grabs a survivor, the others can kill the hunter quickly before other hunters attack. It's possible for all the survivors to get grabbed at once, instantly creating a losing scenario, but it's rare. This mutation is fun, but repetitive. It's just the same thing over and over. The description of this mutation mentions using the mutation to practice shoving hunters mid-pounce. Using this mutation for practice? That sounds like an excellent use for it. Flu Season is a 4 player co-op mutation made by SR69MMJC and Karma Jockey. This mutation is a combination of the two authors' separate mutations. All special infected including the boomer and spitters are disabled. Boss infected can spawn randomly, but can still spawn as part of map specific events. Common infected do not spawn naturally, they only spawn as part of map specific events and when a survivor gets covered in boomer bile. The maximum number of special infected has been increased to 10, and their spawn times have been greatly reduced. 
The boomer and spitter's movement speed have been increased, and their vomit and spit cooldowns have been reduced. The way common infected spawn when a survivor gets covered in boomer bile is comical. They spawn really close by, just around a corner. One note about the common infected, none spawn from triggering car alarms, so car alarms can be ignored. By far the biggest threat in this mutation is the boomers. The common infected they cause to spawn are super difficult to deal with. The boomers also start off the chain of compounding disaster, as I like to call it. What I mean is, them landing their bile will lead to getting swarmed and then lead to taking massive damage from spitters. This means boomers are a high priority. For the most part, spitters can just be ignored. As long as a boomer isn't successful, the spitters don't matter. With that in mind, the best strategy is to use weapons to deal with the fast boomers as quick and effectively as possible. This mutation incentivizes rushing through maps. There are no special infected that can grab survivors, and the longer survivors take, the more damage they'll take in total. The area the survivors occupy determines the difficulty. Tight hallways are a death trap, while wide open areas are trivial. Spitters spitting in the survivor's path over and over in a small area can be grating. It feels like an eternity when they chain their spit attacks, one after another, on the only path forward. This mutation works great thematically. The idea of it being flu season, so there are sick people vomiting and sneezing everywhere, is fitting. That's all the positive things I have to say about this mutation. I think this mutation doesn't play well, and it's frustrating and repetitive. Healing Gnome is a 4-player co-op mutation made by Valve. This mutation disables all healing items and sets the survivor's starting health to 100 temporary health. It also spawns in a special Gnome Chomsky Gnome with the survivors that replenishes temporary health when held by a survivor. Survivors only start losing health when they leave the starting area or safe rooms. This mutation is best played with three other human players, as the survivor bots don't understand the concept and can't pick up the gnome. In this mutation, survivors are often low on health. Because of this, they play their voice lines for being really hurt frequently. This can get really annoying over the course of an entire campaign. The gnome must be carried in the survivor's hands in order for level transitions to happen. It also has to be held in rescue vehicles. This means it's impossible to leave it behind. In the event that the gnome gets stuck out of bounds, the only way to proceed is to restart the map. This can be frustrating, as a gnome gets stuck more often than you'd think. At least the gnome gets a glowing outline so it never gets lost after hectic situations. This is a silly mutation. I've always found the concept of the gnome to be fun. The mutation increases the game's difficulty in a creative way and promotes collaboration among players. I approve of this mutation. Last Gnome on Earth is a 4-player co-op mutation made by Valve. This mutation spawns in a special Gnome Chomsky Gnome with the survivors. Common Infected prioritize the survivor holding the gnome. The goal is to bring the gnome to the ending of the campaign. This mutation is very similar to the Healing Gnome mutation. Like that one, it's necessary to hold the gnome to transition between maps and to finish a campaign. This mutation's description mentions Common Infected prioritizing the survivor holding the gnome. In practice, either the gnome's effect is so weak that it's unnoticeable, or it just doesn't work at all. This mutation isn't very good. It doesn't change the gameplay enough to be interesting and isn't really more challenging. Maybe it can function as practice for the much superior Healing Gnome mutation. Nightmare is a 4-player survival mutation made by Karma Jockey. In this mutation, the glow effect on survivors and items is disabled. The fog is increased. All the infected are stronger, and the amount of special infected is increased. This mutation isn't very good. It's an interesting way to increase the difficulty of survival maps. Survival mode doesn't have an easy, normal, advanced, expert difficulty selection like the other modes. Unfortunately, the changes just aren't very good. Despite this, there's fun to be had here for people who really love survival and wish it could be mixed with realism mode. Room for One is a 4-player co-op mutation made by Valve. This mutation can only be played on the final maps of the campaigns. The mutation makes it so the first survivor that enters the rescue vehicle zone is considered the winner. The winner is indicated in the credit scroll. This is a very simple mutation. All it does is give the players who wish to go, ha ha ha, you're dead and I'm the last one alive, a valid place to play the game. It's not unheard of for players to intentionally screw over their companions in the last second so they alone can be the victor. This mutation makes this troll mentality into a small, specific mutation. Valve made this mutation. They know firsthand their player base can be buttholes. Valve Bleeder is an 8-player scavenge mode mutation made by Valve. This mutation spawns gas cans in, one at a time or in small groups, rather than them being all available at once. After a group is deposited, the next group spawns. Despite the mutation's description, multiple cans can be held and moved at the same time. This mutation doesn't see play. It requires a group of players to play, and so it couldn't be properly tested for review. From the description, it sounds like the goal was to make the survivors group up and move in a more predictable manner. This, combined with gas cans getting poured at a lower rate, probably makes the mutation easier for the infected team. Tank! 
It has to be said like that because there's two exclamation points, is an 8 player versus mode mutation made by Valve. This mutation disables health packs and replaces them with pills. The infected team can only spawn in as tanks. The survivor team is given a 15 second head start after exiting the starting area before tanks start to spawn. Before the last stand update, tanks spawning in on maps that don't support them, like No Mercy's first map, led to situations where the entire infected team could get stuck out of bounds. Right now, with the fixes, this mutation is much more playable. This mutation is comparable to the tank run mutation. Unlike that mutation, it's not a viable strategy to kill every tank that appears. The reason being, tanks that are piloted by players are much more deadly than AI piloted tanks. Since killing tanks is inviolable and the survivors get a 15 second head start, most rounds consist of survivors running as fast as they possibly can through the common infected filled maps. Points in versus mode play are calculated by distance traveled by survivors, so getting as far as possible is ideal. There are many possible strategies in this mutation. If a survivor manages to get ahead of the tanks, their team has to decide if the best course of action is to give chase. The tanks can't easily catch up, so maybe trying to incapacitate the other survivors and cutting their losses is the best thing to do. One strategy is tricking the tanks into attacking and then using the opportunity to get by. The weakness of tanks is their poor movement speed when turning. Unlike most mutations, this one actually sees a small amount of play. It can be really fun and hectic. It can also be good practice for facing tanks in versus mode. It can also also be a little bit buggy sometimes. Regardless, I'd recommend it. Tank Run is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Rayman113. This mutation disables all common and special infected other than the tank. The maximum number of special infected is increased. In this mutation, the tank's appearance doesn't relate to the campaign. Instead, tanks can have their Left 4 Dead 1, Left 4 Dead 2, and the Sacrifice campaign skins. Incapacitated survivors have the ability to crawl. Survivors have unlimited ammunition. Ammo piles have been replaced with laser sight pickups. Certain actions like healing with the health pack and reviving incapacitated survivors have been sped up. Boomer bio slows tanks, and pipe bombs have had their fuse shortened. This mutation is similar to the previous mutation. Unlike that one, it's a viable strategy to kill every tank as they appear. In terms of difficulty, this mutation is trivial on normal mode if the survivors kill every tank they see. On expert difficulty, it's no longer viable to kill the tanks, so rushing to the end of maps becomes the best strategy. Because normal is too easy and expert is too hard, I'd recommend advanced difficulty for this mutation. It strikes a good balance. Despite this recommendation, the gameplay on expert having to outrun tanks rather than face them is very different and worth playing as well. This mutation is like two mutations in one. It can be fun to play this mutation in an every person for themselves sort of way. This mutation can be used to practice against tanks. It's good to get used to some of the quirks in their AI and pathing. One example is, AI tanks can't jump small gaps. So jumping between a space with a small gorge in the middle will force the tank to climb over and over to reach the player. This mutation adds a timer to some campaign finales. It modifies finales to consist of two tanks spawning in simultaneously over and over. As long as the survivors stay at high health, thus retaining the ability to run fast, most finales in this mutation are very easy. This is one of the most fun mutations in the game, and it often sees play. It really makes you realize just how many cars and heavy physics objects there are on the first map of Crash Course. It's a comically large number. I recommend this mutation. Rocket Dude is a 1 to 4 player co op mutation made by Rene TM. This mutation disables survivor bots. The number of survivors depends on the number of players connected to the server. When a new player connects, a new survivor spawns at the location of another survivor. Survivors start with 200 health, the Magnum or Sharp Melee weapon, and the Grenade Launcher. Sharp Melee weapons and the Magnum are the only weapons that can spawn. Weapons have unlimited ammo and don't require reloading. The Grenade Launcher's projectile no longer arcs but rather moves in a straight line. It deals normal damage to the infected, but highly reduced damage to the survivors. Incapacitated survivors are able to crawl. Items are disabled, excluding pain pills and adrenaline. Fall damage is disabled. The way Push Force interacts with physics objects has been modified. Players and physics objects are propelled a great distance by the grenade launcher and other sources of Push Force. One humorous side effect is the grenade launcher can fling tanks around wildly. One probably unintentional side effect is, the trick of tossing gas cans and then shoving them in the air to make them travel further will cause them to instead go absolutely flying. The point of this mutation is to use the grenade launcher to propel the user great distances. This is done by aiming for the floor or close by walls and jumping while firing. In this mutation, throughout maps are strategically placed hidden power-ups that appear like colored mushrooms. When touched, the survivor who touched them receives an effect. The effects range from instant health to adding a throwable to their inventory to the ability to continuously jump and retain momentum by holding down the jump key. This mutation has speedrunner mechanics built in. A timer begins when a survivor exits a starting zone. 
When that survivor enters the safe zone at the end of a map, the time they took to get there is printed in the game's chat. Alongside the time is a stat for how long they spent airborne. When a survivor gets incapacitated, their screen goes black and white. All nearby special infected become highlighted with an outline and a countdown appears. If the survivor kills a special infected before the countdown reaches zero, they're given a second chance and revived, but they remain at critical black and white health. If the timer reaches zero, the survivor gets instantly killed. Besides giving survivors a second chance, this mechanic ensures a lone survivor dies quicker. Dying quickly, rather than having to wait to bleed out, makes it so maps can restart quicker. This mechanic also ensures the survivor dies quicker in the event that the survivor is pinned and it's impossible for them to kill a special infected. This mutation is incredibly fun and sees a lot of play. I highly recommend trying this mutation. It's really fun when played with others, but it's not necessary to play with others. If getting the best time possible through maps is a priority, Playing alone is probably a better idea. One large consideration is the player's ping. This mutation plays much worse with a large amount of latency. Things like bunny hopping don't visually function correctly with a high ping. If the player doesn't have great internet, it's best to play this mutation alone. This mutation does a great job at making players realize just how many massive outdoor invisible walls there are on maps. <laughs> the grenade explosive jumping mechanics are strange. They are difficult to master, but players who do can travel through maps extremely quickly. The closest thing to compare it to is rocket jumping in Team Fortress 2. They're comparable, but very different in how it feels. Because of the potential of traveling through maps at extreme speeds, a lot of the game becomes trivial. Depending on the map, many obstacles such as tanks and witches can be ignored. The only real thing to worry about is the special infected that can grab the survivors, and even they don't pose that much of a challenge. Psst. Hey you, person watching. For fun, see if you can beat my time of 120 seconds on Den Center's third map, playing alone and on normal difficulty. Death Door is a 4 player co op mutation made by Rayman1103. This mutation disables health packs and spawns pain pills in their place. Instead of being incapacitated from damage, survivors are instantly killed. This mutation doesn't change the gameplay very much. It makes the game harder and makes players value not taking damage more. For the most part, players are more willing to use their healing items at a higher health amount than normal to decrease the chance that they'll be too late and not be able to heal in time in a bad situation. Pills are very common in this mutation, so using them as soon as replacement pills are found is often the best thing to do. Since temporary healing is the only healing available, survivors eventually will become low on real health and start playing their voice lines for being close to death. This can get really annoying when it never stops over the course of a long campaign. This mutation encourages moving quickly through maps, as temporary health continuously fades over time. Since health packs can't spawn, the item slot is free to be used by defibrillators and deployable ammunition items. This mutation is alright. It's a bit more challenging. The main problem is it doesn't do enough to differentiate itself from normal gameplay. Most players can probably join a server playing this mutation and not realize anything is different until a new map starts and there's no health packs in the safe room. That's how similar it is to regular gameplay. Bleed Out is a 4 player co-op mutation made by Valve. This mutation disables health packs and spawns pain pills in their place. Survivors start with 100 temporary health. Survivors only start losing health when they leave the starting safe area and safe rooms. Pills are able to revert a survivor from critical black and white health to regular temporary health. Random hordes spawn at an increased rate. This mutation seems to have a large design flaw. Since pills can cure black and white health, it's as if the survivors have an extremely large health pool. Survivors can play as normal, get incapacitated by damage, get revived, play as normal until they go down again, and then get revived again. At this point, they have critical black and white health, right? After taking pills, they no longer have black and white health and can start the process all over again. Effectively, one pills bottle is worth about three health bars. Can you believe it? If the goal of this mutation was to make the game harder, it accomplishes the opposite. If players are unaware that pills can cure black and white health in this mutation, it's comparable to Death's Door and Healing Gnome. Like those, it encourages moving quickly through maps. Since health packs can't spawn, the item slot is free to be used by defibrillators and deployable ammunition items. This mutation isn't very good. Even ignoring the large flaw, it doesn't do enough to change the gameplay. Bleed Out Versus is an 8-player versus mode mutation made by Valve. This mutation disables health packs and spawns pain pills in their place. Survivors start with 100 temporary health. Survivors only start losing health when they leave the starting area and safe rooms. Pills are able to revert survivors from critical black and white health to regular temporary health. Random hordes spawn at an increased rate. This mutation is the same as the bleed out mutation, but for versus mode, hence the name. I can't test out the gameplay of this mutation firsthand because nobody plays it, but I can tell you the broken mechanic with the pills is still present. 
I'd imagine a team that knows that they can save their pills until the last moment has a large advantage over the other team. One thing to consider is the survivor's running speed. Despite the strategy of using pills as late as possible, if the survivor team comes across a tank fight, it may be correct to use pills ahead of schedule in order to run at full speed. Another thing to consider is human controlled infected are way more powerful and may not give the survivors a chance to use their pills when at critical black and white health. On the surface, this mutation sounds like a simplified version of Confoggle, but really it's very different. Just because of the cheesy way that pills function in this mutation, I would not recommend this mutation. There's better ways to play versus mode. Riding My Survivor is an 8 player versus mode mutation made by Winded. In this mutation, common infected are disabled. Special infected other than bosses and jockeys are disabled. Jockeys have increased health and movement speed and deal extra damage. This mutation doesn't see play so it isn't possible to test. I imagine every round consists of the infected team trying to grab all 4 survivors at the same time, causing their team to get quad incapacitated. It may seem like the infected team have an advantage in this mutation, but without common infected the survivors focus is squarely on the jockeys. It balances out in the end. This is probably a fun mutation to try out with friends. Health Pacalypse! It has an exclamation point in its name so it has to be screamed. It is an 8 player versus mode mutation made by Valve. This mutation disables health packs, defibrillators, pain pills and adrenaline shots. This mutation is the real budget confoggle. It makes the infected side stronger and ensures rounds end quicker more often. Without a way to heal the damage the survivors sustain is permanent so it's easier to defeat them. This mutation sees no play so I can't test it out first hand. And that was the final mutation. Wait a second. This video reminds me of a video I made in the past where I reviewed all the campaigns on Left 4 Dead 2. I'll link at the end of this video. Consider watching it if you like the format of this video, it's very similar. And that was the video. I hope this video was entertaining and informative. Additionally, I hope the people watching learned a little bit about the Left 4 Dead 2 mutations and will consider trying some of them out. Thanks for watching. Au revoir.